Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be taking a look at the Chillex AutoAg Automatic Litter Box and the Litter Robot 3 Connect. We will be taking a look at several different aspects of both litter boxes, and I will be covering where I see them performing well, where I think they don't perform well, and I will be giving my thoughts on a few improvements I would like to see in later versions of either. Also take note that while both of these litter boxes were sent to me by Autopets, I did not receive any form of compensation for this video and had no outside influence on either litter box. These opinions are just my own. If you are interested in checking out either litter box, I'll have links in the description below for both. The first aspect of the litter boxes I will be comparing is the size of the two. This category also has a few different subcategories that I think are important for a device like this, because someone who has mobility challenges or difficulty cleaning a litter box might be interested in a litter box that cleans itself to help with their day-to-day. -day. The Litter Robot 3 Connect is much larger compared to the AutoAg. Because of this, the packaging for the Litter Robot 3 is much more bulky. This can be difficult for someone who has mobility challenges to be able to actually get the Litter Robot into their home, so additional help may be required there. The AutoAg has a smaller overall footprint, which means its packaging will be less bulky. From an unpacking standpoint, the Litter Robot 3 is actually easier to unpack compared to the AutoAg, but because of the size and weight, there is definitely some heft to it removing it from the box. With the AutoAg, it has a lot more packaging material you have to work towards to actually get it out of the box. Setup of the Litter Robot 3 Connect is very straightforward. You remove it from the box and the bag it's shipped in, add litter, and turn it on. Within the globe, you'll find a single fill line, which is where you want to fill your litter to. Anything too much past that, and you will end up having unused litter that falls into the waste bin below. You'll also want to make sure that you are keeping the litter close to this line, for optimal performance of the Litter Robot. The Litter Robot even ships with a waste bag already installed, which acts as a template for how to install bags. If you plan on using the Connect functionality of the Litter Robot 3, you'll need to go through onboarding the Litter Robot, which is something I will cover later in this video. Setting up the AutoAg is a bit more involved. First, you'll want to plug in the AutoAg with the included USB-C cable. Because of the position of the power connection, it will be very difficult to do after there is litter in it. So make sure to plug the power cable in, but not yet plug it into the wall. Next, you will need to put in the waste bag, which was not as straightforward as I thought it would be. It's not difficult to do, but it also wasn't something that I was able to quickly pick up on on how to keep the bag in the holder. After that, you want to add your litter. The AutoAg has two lines. The bottom line is the minimum amount of litter required for the litter box, and the top line is the maximum amount of litter. You'll want to make sure to fill close to the top line, and make sure to never let the litter get below the bottom line. After the litter is in, you'll want to put the lid on. This is something that I personally had difficulty with. I spent more time than I will ever admit trying to get it on properly for the first time and even after watching a few videos on how to do it, I still had trouble. Over time, getting the lid on does become easier, but it is pretty frustrating at first. Also, because of the way the lid sits on the litter box, it's pretty easy for it to be knocked off. With a side-by-side -side comparison, it's very easy to tell that the AutoAg will in fact take up much less space compared to the Litter Robot 3 Connect. The size difference also does translate to the amount of waste each litter box can hold. While the Litter Robot 3 can hold about two weeks worth of waste with shaking the waste bin once or twice, the AutoAg holds roughly three days worth. This means that the AutoAg will need to be emptied four times for every one time I have to empty the Litter Robot 3. Obviously, the frequency of emptying will be dependent on your cat, but the smaller waste bin will mean more time emptying on the AutoAg. The two litter boxes have very different styles of waste bin. On the AutoAg, the waste bin is covered by a hard plastic flap that is used to seal the odor. I found that it didn't always sit flush, which means the odor would escape. Also, because of how the flap is, if you have an interested pup, they could easily get into the waste bin. I have concerns that over time, the waste bin flap may lose its shape, which means it could stop sitting flush altogether, which would make odor control impossible. With a litter robot, the waste bin itself is in a compartment below that is only accessible when the litter box is cycling or when emptying it. The waste bin also has rubber seals that help keep the smell in and are replaceable as they will break down over time. The waste bin also has a carbon filter on it so that the bad smells can be captured while allowing some form of airflow. The carbon filters can be replaced by ones from the manufacturer, or you can use generic carbon filters and cut them to size to save on cost. While on the topic of waste bins, both have different means of access. On the Litter Robot 3, you pull the bin out from the front to empty it and change the bag. While on the AutoAg, you have to remove it from the back. Having to remove the waste bag from the back can be a bit annoying if you have the AutoAg in a corner or near a wall, so this is something you would want to take into consideration. 
I found when the auto egg is full of litter, the shape made it a bit more cumbersome to move around and almost always caused the lid to pop off. Both litter boxes require a clumping litter and both recommend clay. I found the same type of performance out of the different litters I tried in both the Litter Robot 3 Connect and the auto egg. Both litter boxes also can be used with generic trash bags instead of purchasing waste bags from the manufacturer. This can help you lower the total cost of ownership for either litter box. The two litter boxes cycle differently from one another. The auto egg uses a traditional raking system that shifts through the litter pushing waste into the waste bin. I found that on larger clumps, a lot of the litter was getting pushed through into the waste bin as well, which was pretty wasteful. I also found that the rake would get clogged up pretty quickly or leave behind smaller clumps in the litter box. I also noticed that if a clump was close to the rake, then it almost guaranteed the rake would get clogged. And while the auto egg does come with a scoop to help clear clogs, I found that I would have to remove the rake and clean it with water to really clean it. A good clumping litter does help in reducing the rake getting clogged, but does not completely remove the problem. The Litter Robot 3 Connect has a different means of clearing waste. For the Litter Robot, it rotates its globe, causing all the litter to rotate into a grate that is designed to sift out clumps and other waste for it to continue rotating until it finally falls into the waste bin below. I personally like this method over the raking style, as you don't have a rake that gets clogged easily. A downside of this method, however, is if the clumps stick to the liner, then they will tend to fall straight down hitting the grate or side of the litter box causing streaking. A way to mostly avoid that from happening is making sure to use a good clumping litter and keeping the litter filled. Both litter boxes will automatically cycle after they detect a cat and use the litter box. For the auto egg, it will cycle 5 minutes after the cat leaves, as well as at 3am, 9am, 3pm, and 9pm. You can also set the auto egg to manual so that it won't run unless you trigger a raking cycle from the LCD screen. For the Litter Robot 3, you can choose between a 3 minute, 7 minute, or 15 minute wait time before the Litter Robot will cycle after detecting a cat. Waiting longer can help with clumping formation, where having it cycle quicker will help remove the smell more quickly. The Litter Robot also has the ability to have a sleep mode set. With sleep mode, you are able to set an 8 hour period where the Litter Robot will not cycle even if it is used. This can be helpful if you live in a smaller home and don't want to be bothered by the sound of the litter box cycling. Another aspect for the litter boxes I want to touch on is the noise when they cycle. The Litter Robot 3 isn't too loud and I can't hear it when it's cycling downstairs and I'm upstairs, but it definitely isn't something I would want cycling in the same room as me if I was sleeping. With the auto egg, its cycle is very quiet. I'm not sure if it's just the one I got or not, but while cycling, random popping sounds did occur which were pretty loud that brought the maximized level close to what the Litter Robot 3 produces. Unfortunately, because of the random popping sounds, I would also not want to be sleeping in the same room as the auto egg when it cycles. Otherwise, I think it might actually be quiet enough to not disturb me. Both litter boxes can detect if your cat enters the litter box while a cleaning cycle is running and will automatically stop until your cat leaves before starting again, which is a great safety feature. The auto egg has a feature I like that takes advantage of the weight sensors to actually weigh your cat as well as weigh how much they leave behind when they go to the bathroom. This is nice if you want to keep track of your cat's weight to make sure they are not gaining or losing too much weight. Unfortunately, there is no app for the auto egg, so this information is only stored locally on the litter box itself and you have to use the onbox screen to check the stats. I'll be touching on the auto egg screen a bit later in this video. Both litter boxes will require to be cleaned from time to time, which will require taking apart either litter box to properly clean them. Both litter boxes have different annoyances when it comes to this task. For the litter robot, it is easy to take apart with an included empty button that will dump all of the litter into the waste bin. After everything is taken apart, you can clean everything except the base and bonnet with a mild soap and water. For the base and bonnet, you'll want to carefully wipe them down, making sure to stay away from any of the sensors. Cleaning the globe can be pretty cumbersome because of the size. If you live in an apartment, you can clean the litter box inside a tub if needed. Just make sure to get all of the litter out first because you don't want them getting into your drains and clogging them. After washing everything, you want to let everything air dry for several hours because you can't really towel dry the globe. After everything is dry, you can put it back together, fill it with litter, and you're good to go. With the auto egg, disassembly is a bit more involved. First you need to do a manual rake, and then when it's at the end of the litter box, you'll need to pull the rake off from the motor base. After, you need to remove the litter pan. If it has a lot of litter in it, you'll need to be careful to not dump it out when removing it. After everything is disassembled, you'll have several plastic parts that you can clean with soap and water. You will want to make sure not to get any water in the base itself, as that is where all the electronics are. Instead, you can use a wipe to clean it. One thing I did like to point out about the auto egg is that there are a lot of crevices where litter can and will fall into that will need to be cleaned. I would probably use a vacuum to clean the litter out before wiping it down. After everything is washed, things will take about an hour or so to dry and can be put back together. Putting things back together is also a bit more involved. While the auto egg doesn't have an app, it does keep track of your cat's usage and weight. This is accessed through the built-in LCD screen on the auto egg. Unfortunately, the LCD screen is on the inside of the auto egg, which means if you want to use it, you have to take the lid off. This wouldn't be that big of a deal, but again, the lid is pretty annoying to put on and keep on. So to me, this feature is almost non-existent. 
I also found the touchscreen to be lacking in the responsiveness department, where sometimes I would have to touch the screen several times to actually get it to work. The Litter Robot 3 Connect has an app that allows for monitoring every cat's usage, as well as allows for setting changes and notifications if there are issues with the litter box or if the drawer is full. Onboarding is pretty straightforward and just works. You can have more than one litter robot in the app in case you have more than one for some reason, which is nice. And if you have the feeder robot, you can have both of them in the same app as well. The app notifications are nice not only because of being alerted if there is issues, but it will also alert if the waste bin is full. This can be extra helpful if you don't want to walk past the litter box every day to see if the full indicator is on or not. The AutoAid comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and a 12 month warranty. If you do send it back, you will have to pay return shipping, and if you end up buying a reconditioned auto egg, you will not have the 30-day money-back guarantee, just a 12-month warranty. The Litter Robot 3 Connect comes with a 90-day money-back guarantee and an 18-month warranty. If you do send it back, you will have to pay return shipping. The warranty can also be extended to 3 years for an additional cost. If you purchase a reconditioned Litter Robot 3, you will get the same 90-day money-back guarantee and 18-month warranty as if you had purchased it new. Both companies offer spare parts that can be ordered as well. This is helpful if you are outside your warranty and something fails. The Litter Robot replacement parts are a bit more expensive compared to the auto egg parts, especially when you consider there are more parts and sensors that could need to be replaced. As far as for the companies that make the litter boxes, the makers of the Litter Robot 3 Connect have been around for over 20 years and this is their third generation of automatic litter boxes. And while they have stopped carrying their older models, they are still providing spare part purchase options for their second generation model, which means you can confidently expect to be able to get replacement parts if needed for the next 7 to 10 years and probably even longer than that. For the auto egg, I wasn't able to find out too much information about the company. Going to their about section links to a page that talks about the auto egg and all posts I could find about it are from early 2020 and on. While I'm not saying to not buy a product just because it's from a new company, I have personally been burned a few times now with smart pet devices, so something to keep in mind. The auto egg retails for $399.99 USD and can be purchased with a white, pink, or blue top. You can purchase a refurbished one for $379.99 USD without the 30-day return policy but still with a 12-month warranty. The Litter Robot 3 Connect retails for $499 USD and can be purchased in a gray or beige color. You can purchase a refurbished one for $399 USD which comes with the same 90-day return policy and 18-month warranty which can be extended to 3 years. You can also buy the non-connect version of the Litter Robot 3 for $449 USD to save a little bit of money. Just note that the non-connect version does not have the app functionality. Everything else is exactly the same though. There are a few things I really like about the AutoAig. The first is the weight tracking capability. It's a good use of the weight sensors and it's also good health information to have on your pet. It's unfortunate that it's only available on the LCD screen that is very hard to get to and use. I also like that the port on the AutoAig is just a standard USB-C port. This lets you purchase a different cable without having to go directly to the manufacturer. It's also nice that the included cable is also a thicker cable which will help from pets that like to chew on cords. I also really like how quiet the auto egg is. The random popping sounds are a bit annoying, but overall it is very quiet. The major thing I don't like about the auto egg is a small waste bin. Having to empty it every few days almost makes having a self-cleaning litter box pointless. I also wish the touchscreen was in a different location on the outside of the litter box, or if it just used an app instead. With this location, it's very tedious to use because of the lid, which brings me to another thing I really don't like about the auto egg. The lid is not very easy to get on and easily can be knocked off by a pet or yourself. The lid also shows that the overall build quality is not the greatest on the auto egg. And for a litter box that costs $400, I would expect better overall build quality and more sensors. Unlike the Litter Robot 3, you will not be notified if the waste bin is full on the auto egg. It will just keep cycling. I also do not think there are any alerts for if the auto egg fails to cycle or if it gets jammed. You will have to continue to check it to make sure the waste bin isn't full and that the auto egg has not malfunctioned. For the Litter Robot 3 Connect, I really like having notifications on my phone and being able to make changes right from my phone. I also really like how even though it has several sensors and its mechanism to clean is more complex compared to raking, it just feels more simple to set up and use as well. Also, the overall build quality compared to the auto egg is really noticeable. It just feels more sturdy and well put together. One thing I would like to see improved on for the litter robot is for it to be quieter when cycling. The noise level isn't horrible, but it would be nice if it made even less noise. I would also like to see weight tracking being built into the data being collected. It's a nice feature on the auto egg. It would also be nice to have more than just one month's worth of data saved in the app. Right now it's just one month and I would like to see more than that. A major aspect I don't like about the Litter Robot 3 Connect is its size. Its larger footprint is cumbersome and makes it difficult to hide away. I also wish the globe itself offered a bit more room for my cat who is on a larger side. I think it would be a big improvement if they could figure out a way to make things more compact without shrinking the size of the waste bin too much. Overall, if you were looking at either of these self-cleaning litter boxes, I think it would be better off spending the extra $100 on Litter Robot 3 Connect over the auto egg. It feels better made, has a long return period and warranty that can be extended, and has many more built-in features.
If you are okay getting a reconditioned one, then you can save the $100 while still getting the same return window and warranty as if you had bought a new. I do think there are a few instances where you might want to consider overlooking the flaws of the auto egg and pick one up, and that is if you absolutely need a self-cleaning litter box that is smaller than the Litter Robot 3. The smaller footprint is definitely a nice feature of the auto egg, and not everyone will have all the room needed for the Litter Robot 3. But if you are looking for a smaller footprint, you could look at other self-cleaning litter boxes that don't have the health monitor and save a good chunk of change. Another reason might be if you really want or need a self-cleaning litter box that is practically silent. Mine did randomly pop from time to time, and I'm not sure if that was just mine or not, but outside of the random popping noises, it really is nearly silent. Here's a quick recap of all the different aspects I took a look at, and how the two litter boxes stack up against each other, in my opinion. To keep things simple, which litter box performed better in a category got a plus, and if both litter boxes performed well and similar to each other, they both got pluses. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps YouTube know that it was a good video. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release a new video. Thank you for watching.